Hi everyone, my name is Clemens Wan. I'm a solution architect and I present a lot of workshops for enterprise clients. Today I wanted to share the fuzzing as a service product that we're releasing in GA. As a bit of context, Web 2 and Web 3 have very similar software development life cycles. You always need to test and review before deploying to production. And this is especially important because smart contracts and the code is publicly viewed, it's deployed and likely connects to some other protocols that have token value. And what we're focusing on today is for the devs to run this fuzzing software to find the code vulnerabilities, which is prior to any of the human audits that we do. The consensus diligence team has been around since 2016. It provides a suite of these security and analysis tools for auditors. On the left side, you have the Scribble product, which we'll go into later on, but it annotates your code for expected output. This is instead of kind of writing your full test cases and it's all open source. The product that has been in beta since September of 2022 is this fuzzing as a service product in the middle here. And finally, we have the manual audits done by our diligence and audit team. And that is how you get to release for mainnet. So what is fuzzing? Fuzzing has been around since around 2018. It's a, a set of papers that we wrote for Harvey fuzzing, a lot of other uh, research participants in our in our ecosystem have been writing papers as well. It is used to automatically detect bugs by, by using entropy. So here entropy is feeding millions, if not tens of millions of invalid, unexpected semi-random data points into the system to cause any type of unexpected behavior. So instead of just writing test cases where you have edge scenarios to catch common bugs like zero or you know very large numbers or negative numbers, we're looking at full campaigns that runs uh, on our on our own configured servers on your behalf. So you can submit your code to us and it'll identify any of those vulnerable functions that you write. So the scribble portion is the annotations that you put on the contracts and functions. There's a triple slash that you write and it's kind of like uh, expecting what type of output for that function. Um, this doesn't replace any manual audits, but definitely is complementary and make sure that you get the most out of the audit itself when it comes time. And as an output, um, it's super easy. The reason why we call it fuzzing as a service is there is an end-to-end -end report that we provide for you. You can run the fuzzing campaign from 10 minutes to hours at a time. And the longer you run the fuzzing campaign, the, the more vulnerabilities it tests. It's kind of hard to say how long it takes, but um, from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, probably catch a majority of the vulnerabilities if you write your test cases properly. You can you know, alter the fuzzing time in your configuration. To take a step back, the goal here is really to improve the security of Solidity smart contracts that are launched on any EVM compatible network. And we do that by providing on the left here a set of fuzzing as a service, helping all developers really an easy mechanism to have quality assurance for that code. And I think this is especially important if you're launching your code to multiple networks with a lot of versions. And on the right side, we leverage our audit team to review your code freeze and we try to complete your audit between four and six weeks. So let's go and do a demo. Um, what does this look like? Just to give you a high level, there is a fuzzing.diligence.tools that I'm going to go into. It has an auth zero sign up, And then from there, you can get your free account. Uh, and then you can download this uh, fuzzing client, which is a Python. It's, it's on pip. And then you can submit your contract code. We'll be doing the scribble exercise one. Okay, so let's get started. This is fuzzing.diligence.tools. And here we're going to get started. And this is Auth0. I'm going to sign up with a new account. And I will sign up with my proof of selfie account. All these fun things. And so here you first should check your subscription. There is a subscription plan for a free trial. It's 10 hours of fuzzing. Remember, you know, you can do a lot of different projects with 10 hours of fuzzing, but it's only one campaign at a time. So let's check out here. It'll go to subscribe as a free trial. So it's just subscribe. You don't even have to input your other types of credit cards or anything. And what I'll also do here is API keys. I'm going to generate an API key. Let's call this delete test. 
create that key. And now I have a key that's only good for one time. So once you sign up, you're gonna get an email and the email will have some instructions and it's gonna look a lot like this. It's our fuzzing-docs.diligence.tools and I'll show you how to actually get this fuzzing running. So I'm going to do this live. Instead of using my local host, the easiest way to do this and kind of the best way to do this is to go to consensus your scribble exercise and use something called code spaces. And I just learned about this, so I'm going to use my own code space because it makes sure to have the same dependencies pretty much written in. And I think that's really, really good because you don't want to, um, you know, have any type of errors going through. So here it is loading a customized, you know, bootstrapped code base off of the scribble exercise dash one. So let's just let that load. There are some IDE tools that I will be installing. Uh, one of them is NPM. Oh, it is building a lot of things. NPM dash I for hard hat. It's still installing Node.js. Let's just let that run. For those who haven't used code spaces uh, from GitHub, it is very useful. So it is now installing my NPM, and I will likely fast forward this. Okay, so it has installed NPM and everything's bootstrapped, and I think I'm ready to go. So the first thing to install is the IDE tool. So one is Hardhat. So I'm going to install Hardhat locally, which works. And then I'm going to NPM install Ganache locally. which should work. And then next, I'm going to install the tools that Consensus wrote. So ETH Scribble Global, and there we go. It is installing Scribble, the language annotation language. And then I'm going to install Diligence Fuzzing and here, uh, Python's already installed, so I can do pip3 install diligence fuzzing, and that is also installed. Okay, it will download everything. So everything here is set up within the scribble test to point to our uh, contracts. So by default, there is a vulnerable ERC contract over here. There are some vulnerabilities that are written. If you wanna find the solution yourself, there's an annotated version um, with all the scribble tests that we've already written, but we're going to run this vulnerable ERC. It has successfully installed, that's fine. And there's also this fuzzle, fuzz, uh, fuzz hard hat YAML that we have here. And what you wanna do is enter your key. So I'm gonna copy that key that I had before and place that here and save. And note that the target is to the vulnerable ERC20. And so what you can do next is add in a scribble over here. So I have this scribble starts with three backslashes and I can save that. So here it says, make sure the total supply is in sync with the balances with the unchecked sum of the balances is equal to the total supply and save that. So I am using hard hat here and there is a make file over here for make fuzz hard hat. And so I will do that. I will make fuzz hard hat. And that should run all of these commands. So it's downloading the compiler, it's compiling all the code, creating the build artifacts. And it is creating the ganache instance, and it is then killing the ganache instance and shutting everything down because it is sending this campaign to fuzzing.diligence.tools. So we can go back to fuzzing over here under my proof of selfie at Gmail. 
and you'll see that it has created a scribble exercise um, right now that I just did. So here uh, it will complete the exercise for 10 minutes and why don't I just finish the presentation and come back to what that report looks like. Okay, so what I shared was how to submit the report, but a lot of people like to think about the other fun things. I think fuzzing is important to Web3 development, but what about AI? What about ChatGPT and GPT-4? Um, you can submit your code and it'll suggest vulnerabilities and mitigations. So I personally love AI. I've researched it in the past and uh, I think there's a lot of potential around large language models, LLMs, uh, especially if you look at Copilot that's that's going to be launched soon uh, within GitHub. So you can you know, write code in parallel. Um, what the program did here, if you're wondering, kind of in this GPT-4 or even GPT-3.5, is it's actually recommending some common vulnerabilities that might have been written about. And it looks a lot closer to another product we have called MythX, which is looking at code patterns in order to find common, kind of these common links to smart contract vulnerabilities. And maybe in a few months, we will integrate fuzzing into a chat GPT plugin. But for now, I, I think the bot is running um, less of the fuzzing method of bug detection and more of the pattern of code. So how does fuzzing and consensus fuzzing as a service, uh, as a product compared to others? The main thing is we're the only fuzzing as a service provider in the market uh, and we do charge for plans for enterprise plans and more importantly we have contract support for enterprises that are trying to leverage this into production. Most of the other fuzzing code bases are open source and it does require some DevOps expertise for you to set up the fuzzing for that application. Uh, for diligence fuzzing, uh, the other unique thing is that we're using Scribble, so you don't have to write the full test cases as you would for Echidna. And you can also submit the fuzzing campaign for any set amount of time. So it uses our optimized servers instead of using your own instances on AWS or for your local computer or for Docker. Uh, we can also provide support on, in the long term for enterprises that are leveraging this, and we would love to work with auditing firms around this. So who is fuzzing for? Uh, honestly, we want all devs to be able to use this when they're building better processes on their, their DAP code bases. But we think a majority of the customers would fall under auditors and enterprise level QA engineers. Auditors can use the, the deep analysis tools to share insights on additional vulnerabilities uh, that may, they may not have found with other fuzzing code bases. And we also hope that this uh, helps with mature companies that want to integrate the fuzzing process as a necessary tool for anything like version upgrades or patches or, or launching of their own smart contracts. As a summary, we've written a lot of high-level talking points here. If you need to you know, pitch this to your own team of how fuzzing, how it works, and I will have a link to this presentation in the description of the video. If you want to read all these slides or copy them in more detail, it will be a, a link to the Google Slides. And with that, there's also a link for all the documentation that I went through. And feel free to reach out to us on Discord and through um, the diligence tool directly. So here the diligence tool has been running and there's a, a help section somewhere over here. Maybe it's in docs. I'm sure there's a help section somewhere, FAQ. So uh, fuzzing what it has done so far in this current campaign you can click into. It is running this um, onto our single uh, set of servers. It has 58% code coverage for four minutes. And uh, you can stop this ahead of time if you want to. You can stop the campaign. And in your code itself over here, uh, when you're writing your YAML file, there is a time limit that you can write for how long you want your campaign to run. But here it has already found the vulnerabilities inside of this ERC20 soul. So it shows the different functions that have va invalidated uh, this particular set of scribble. So note here that um, mitigation is not a part of this. That is very, very tough to do. Eventually we will you know, input this into maybe that, that large language model, but at the moment it is just indicating which are the functions that, that likely have errors. 
they can tell you all of these great things. And the more specific types of contracts and the more specific type of scribble that you write for uh, this, the better this gets, obviously, because it's not just doing a generic check, but it can do more in-depth checks. Great. And so that is fuzzing and looking forward to talking to more customers about this in the future. Thank you.